Hey everybody, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oro Reports. Now, I probably don't need to tell you about Mark Twain at this point, due to the fact that he was the most classical American author of all time. Also, if you may recall, about two years ago, I blogged Will Venton's The Adventures of Mark Twain, which I stand by, was an awesome stop-motion film where Twain, along with Tom Sawyer, Huck Finn, and Becky Thatcher, searched for Halley's Comet, which may remind everybody appeared in the sky when Mark Twain was both born and when he passed away. Plus, I wouldn't have known about this movie if I never saw Huey Toonmore and Jaime Tooth's review from 2010. Anyway, for the movie that I'll be blogging today, I'm going to look at a movie from the mid-1990s, which was, believe it or not, the very first live-action Disney movie that I ever saw on the big screen. So, without further ado, released on December 22nd, 1995, the movie is Tom and Huck. Now, let's get started. In this film, while sneaking around the cemetery late at night, mischievous pals Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn secretly view local bully Injun Joe murdering the town's undertaker with his knife. The frightened friends swear never to speak to anybody about what they saw, but when Tom learns that harmless town drunk Muff Potter has been charged with the murder, his conscience forces him to intervene and clear Potter's name. So, what are my thoughts on the movie? Well, like with The Mask of Zorro, I didn't understand too much about this movie when I saw it in theaters when I was about five years old. But now that I'm older, I think this movie, while not technically one of my favorites, is actually a pretty decent film to watch. Plus, nowadays, it's another underrated classic. And to further explain why I sort of like the film, let's move on to Mustang Notes. The film was directed by Peter Hewitt, who would later direct The Borrowers and Garfield the movie, and he wrote the 2004 Thunderbirds movie. Also, it was produced and co-written by Stephen Somers, who also worked on Disney's adaptation of Twain's 1884 novel, the 1993 live-action film The Adventures of Huck Finn. Parts of the movie were filmed in Cathedral Caverns in Woodville, Alabama, and in the town of Mooresville, also in Alabama. Now, aside from this movie and the 1993 Adventures of Huck Finn film, during the making of this blog, I discovered that back in 1990, the same year when Disney adapted The Prince and the Pauper and the year I was born, Disney released a TV movie called Back to Hannibal, The Return of Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. Also, I think it's pretty insane that Disneyland's Tom Sawyer Island has been in the frontier area ever since 1956. Plus, while Tom and Huck is the very first live-action Disney film that I've seen in theaters, I have seen a few other films in theaters when I was still very little during the early 90s before seeing it like Aladdin, The Lion King, Pocahontas, Casper, and Sabrina. Anyway, while watching Tom and Huck again for the first time in, let's just say, a long while, I realized, while it is rated PG, this movie is not technically for little children, due to several serious and dark moments. Plus, it even includes alcohol and a little bit of adult language, which kind of does make sense since, like I said two years ago, Mark Twain is not a children's author, just an author for no particular age group. Anyway, I've also discovered that there are several things in this film that make it pretty different from the original book. For example, in the book, the town is named St. Petersburg, but in the movie, it is named Hannibal. Still, I think Hannibal looks like a very nice little southern village, and I think the film's cinematography is pretty good for the time. Also, I think this film is pretty similar 
to the 2003 live action film Holes, another live action Disney film that's rated PG and not for little kids to watch. Plus, I like that the movie involves a buried treasure and that the movie's main plot involves Tom and Huck trying to save an innocent man from a terrible fate. In fact, there are a few scenes that are pretty memorable in my opinion, like the whitewash scene, the scene where Tom and Huck are covered in mud, and the cave scene at the film's climax. Also to note, I think the musical score by Steven Endelman is very catchy, and it's also very fitting to the southern frontier. And that's all I got from Mustang Notes. So let's move on to the cast. Let's start with our main character, Tom Sawyer, played by Jonathan Taylor Thomas, whom was in The Lion King, The Adventures of Pinocchio, The Adventures of Spot, and I'll Be Home for Christmas. To me, like in the book, Tom is a kid who has a habit of getting into trouble and looking for adventure and excitement. Plus, there are times when Tom can be a bit boastful, but at the same time, he is kind, gentle, and friendly, and he does not abandon a friend who's in trouble. During this movie, Tom makes it his goal to save Muff Potter from a false murder charge. Plus, I thought Tom was very brave to tell everybody in Hannibal that he witnessed the murder. Next is Huckleberry Finn, played by the late Brad Renfro who made his debut in the 1994 movie, The Client. In this film, Huck has been living out in the wilderness for quite some time, and to me, while he and Tom seem to be close friends, Huck seems like the kind of person who likes to keep to himself. But, on the other hand, I like that he helps Tom spy on Engine Joe and try to take Merle's treasure map as evidence, but to no avail. Also, I think the most interesting plot point involving Huck is that he makes a pretty good knife hunter due to his father being the greatest on the Mississippi. At the end of the movie, Huck gets adopted by Widow Douglas. Our next character is Rebecca Thatcher, aka Becky, played by a young Rachel Lake Cook, whom was in Josie and the Pussycats, Batman Beyond, the 2007 Nancy Drew movie, and she played Tifa in Final Fantasy VII Advent Children and Kingdom Hearts 2. As mostly everybody knows, Becky is Tom Sawyer's crush, and she's a considerably uptight and stuck-up yet mischievous young girl, like during the scene where she pushes Tom off a bridge. Plus, while Becky doesn't have too much screen time in this film, I really like Rachel's performance, and I like the part where she and Tom are exploring McDougal's cave before getting attacked by Engine Joe. However, I didn't really like the part where she punches Tom after he revealed himself to not be dead after falling out of the church ceiling, courtesy of Huck pushing him. Next we come to the movie's prime suspect, Muff Potter, played by Michael McShane whom was also Chris Q. Todd in the Tower of Terror movie, Tuck and Roll in Pixar's A Bug's Life, Rumpelstiltskin in Happily Never After, and Sid from Final Fantasy X. Muff is a drunkard who is framed by Engine Joe for the murder of Doc Robinson, while all three were body snatching in the graveyard. In my opinion, Muff may seem a bit weird and eccentric, but he's also a very kind man, and I like that he tells stories to the children at the picnic. Plus, I like the scene where Muff helps Judge Thatcher find Tom and Becky after they got lost in the caves. Finally, we come to the movie's main antagonist, Engine Joe, played by Eric Schweig, who received the first Americans in the Arts Award for Outstanding Performance by an Actor in a Supporting Role film. In the movie, like in the book, Injun Joe murdered Doc Robinson while searching for One-Eye Mural's lost treasure, and he framed Muff Potter for said murder. To me, Injun Joe is cold-hearted, cruel, 
remorseful, ruthless, and very, very dangerous. Plus, he's deeply antagonistic towards the town's citizens, and he's known for striking fear into the children at the village. No surprise, since Engine Joe was the very first live-action Disney villain that I ever saw on the big screen, and he really traumatized me at the time, especially during Tom Sawyer's nightmare scene. And trust me, with an attitude like his, you can obviously tell he's a baddie. Well, that and his knife. Also to note, Joe would kill people out of greed just for money and or treasure. Plus, Joe is determined to kill whoever witnessed the murder after finding a green marble in the graveyard. And after Tom Sawyer reveals Joe's crime during the trial, proving Muff's innocence, Joe plots to kill the kid as revenge. However, on a side note, I find it pretty interesting that Joe has a history with Huck Finn and his father. And now on to my final words. Overall, Tom and Huck is pretty much a decent movie to watch. While it's not technically one of my favorites from the 1990s or from Disney in general, I think the film's cinematography is still good for its time. The setting in Hannibal is nice. The music is nice to listen to. Several scenes are pretty memorable, while a few others can be pretty dark and serious. Plus, the story, despite several alterations, pretty much do a good job at staying true to Mark Twain's classical book. Plus, I also like that the film shares a pretty good message about friendship. Also, I think the two leading actors do a decent job with their roles, and the villain, Engine Joe, has got to be one of Disney's most threatening live-action villains ever. Lastly, nowadays, this film is another that I would label in the underrated category, since I don't know if many folks talk about it these days. But still, if you're into Mark Twain's stories, you should check out this movie, but I wouldn't really recommend it for younger children. Yes, this movie is PG, but it does contain a bit of adult language, dark moments, and alcohol. But on the other hand, if you do intend to have your kids watch it, make sure you see it with them. As for my rating, I'll give it a 75% out of 100. Well, that's all for now. Join me next time where we look at a movie from the late 1980s which involves a disabled kid who is gifted at playing video games. Mustang Power. Hey.